Um, this, this is supposed to be the most interesting topic because Indians love this word, this three-letter word, which is sex. And we love it so much that we don't speak about it, but we just do a lot of it. That's, that, that probably explains our population. Um, I, um, I'm going to share my story with you all. And it's not a sad story. It's, it did have uh, a bit of a struggle in the beginning, but it's a sad, it was a sad story, but now it's a very happy story. I'm going to take you through my family album. That cute guy is me. This guy who's tilted, with his neck tilted, it's not become straight even now, um, is me. My first question is, what if my family was the most safest place? I was seven years old when I was sexually abused. My abuser was my maternal uncle. He repeatedly kept abusing me. It started, it started while he was giving me a bath. Uh, he forced me to have oral sex with him. After a while, um, uh, after a while I, uh, I see myself put on the bed and he had anal sex with me. I was just seven years old, not even seven in fact. I, uh, I tried screaming, not that I didn't, I didn't bec not because I knew what was happening with me, I didn't know anything. Just that I, I found it a little, uh, a little difficult to understand and I, and I found it very uncomfortable what was happening with me. So I did try to scream and he shut my mouth and that's when I stopped speaking about it. I swallowed my words and I didn't gather the courage for another 11 years to speak about it. In between, I did gather a little bit of courage from here and there where I did try telling this to my mom. I, I lived in a joint family. I had moms, I had aunts, I had uncles and everybody. Um, I tried telling, telling it to my mom. I told my mom that mom, I was around 11 or 12. I told my mom that my uncle touches me here and there and I don't like it. My mom thought, my mom probably thought that it was something that these boys play often. They hit you on your buttocks and, and, you, and they play all these funny games. So my mother thought that I was just being a little too emotional about it. She said, that don't go in front of your uncle. And my uncle always told me, he always told me that if, I, if I'm going to reveal about this to anybody, the person is not going to believe me. Why I was quiet for so many years, I just didn't muster the courage to say no. After that, when I was around a little two, three years down the line, I again tried telling my mom. This time, I was, I was, I was, I, I was, I was a little, I, I did gather a few more words to say. And I told my mom, mom, I'm bleeding from my anus. And she said, you're eating too many mangoes. So I decided that I'm, I'm going to cut down on mangoes. And I didn't have mangoes because mangoes became the reason why my mother couldn't understand me. So did my mother fail? Yes, she did. That's my mom. No, she's not a bad woman or anything. I'm going to tell you why people fail. That's my father. This is me. The reason why I'm sharing um, my family album is not because I'm very narcissistic, which I am, but... It's simply because I want you to understand that I lived a very normal life. I'm, I'm just that other Chotu that you see on, uh, down the street, your neighborhood child. I'm not somebody who's, who's come to TEDx to talk and this happens only with him and no one else. This is my sister, my brother. That's my Dudwala. I loved animals at that time. I was very scared of them. And yes, Gandhiji. Mm -hmm. What if I found the courage to say no? I could have obviously saved many years of abuse. Uh, you all would want to know how it ended finally. I did try and tell this to one friend of mine. One friend of mine. And that friend went blah blah to the whole college. 
thing that, you know what, he has had sex with his uncle. Because sex is, a, sex is always something that we, that, that we treat in the realm of fantasy. We don't look at, look at sex as science. So I had graffiti wall in my college, which used to get painted saying, for gay sex, contact Harish. I'm gay, but that's not because of sex abuse. Uh, but at that time, I didn't even know whether I was gay or straight or bisexual or transgender or what. I, I, I had no clue about these words. But I had graffiti walls painted with my name saying for gay sex contact Harish. I had my phone number also put over there. Uh, to an extent that it pushed me to suicide. I tried slashing my wrist. I slashed my wrist and you know what happens. When, I, I'm, I'm a big Hindi film buff. I'm a big Bollywood buff. So every time I slashed my wrist, irrespective of whether, whether it was because of me slashing the wrist, I fainted. Because that's what happens in films. <laughs> so that was the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened was I thought that, no, this is not working. Let me do something else. Or oh, then I remember this, this film where this heroine used to, uh, you know, um, she used to, the heroine got raped and then she had tablets. I thought that I can't, I can't hang down the ceiling because that's, that's something that was very gory. So I said, okay, the next thing is what? I'll have tablets to die. So I had tablets, I slept for a nice 14 hours and then I woke up. <laughs> so, so, so while all this was happening, I had my, uh, I, you know, I was, I was shame. I used to face a, face a lot of shame to go to college. But uh, finally, one day, uh, my, my uncle, uh, my other uncle, not my abuser, got, got home a dog. And all that I did was, I put my head, every time he used to come inside the house, I, he used to insist, every time after I got abused, he used to insist that I speak to him. His name is Jimmy. He's no more, but he's still there with me. He, I used to put my head between his paws and start crying. I started speaking to him. I, he wasn't a speaking god, a speaking dog. And I, and I said the truth. He was the inverse of dog for me. He was God. But he wasn't a speaking God. He was a listening God. Okay? He was a listening dog. And I used to put my head between his paws and start crying. And he used to lick my tears. And because he listened to me, it gave me a lot of courage. By the way, before, you know, my, my period of being abused at a young age, by the time it had, I had reached the age of 12 or 13 or 14, I suppose, I don't remember the exact age, uh, the abuse intensity also grew. My uncle thought that, okay, I'm, I have this guy, so let's, let's call people home and let's have a feast. So there used to be four or five people coming home. They all used to have sex with me, one after the other. They used to have anal sex with me. And many a times when I used to uh, when I used to um, perform oral sex on them, it was my own blood that I was drinking. What if I found a trustworthy friend? Yes, I did, my dog. But what if I found a human friend? I found no friend. All my friends in school were women, were girls. But still, I found no friend who was a boy who could come and speak to me about gender, about sex, in the realm of science, or tell me that, or, or, or even if that one friend, of course he was my age, he was as ignorant as me, so I don't blame him for that. But what if I found that one friend? What if we had a culture where we spoke about sex? What if I didn't live in four legs? That's Jimmy. Okay, and that's my sister. That's my other dog. That, that was a boy, and this is a babe. This is Lisa. What if I didn't speak for the rights of others? You know, I didn't speak for, I don't speak about gender and sexuality because it appeases my ego. It does. It obviously does. But every time I spoke about gender, I spoke about sexuality, I spoke about my own problems. Every time, at, at, at this forum, as I'm speaking to you, and I've spoken about this in various schools, colleges, various forums. And whenever I speak about it, by mistake, I, start, I, I, I utter a few things which I myself wasn't aware of because my mind was blocked completely. I had completely shut my mind to the fact that I was being abused because no one wants to remember a broken date. 
you know. No one wants to remember someone who's dead and keep crying all their lives. So that's exactly that happened with me. So it was a bad part of my life and I didn't want to remember. But every time I spoke about it, there were certain fragments. You know, I would just say like that and there was this one talk that I was speaking about and suddenly I said, suddenly I said, oh, uh, you know what, this happened with me and, I was, and, there was, and my uncle wasn't the only guy, there were four other people. And I just said that. And then I realized that, oh my God, really, there were four, four other guys. So I wasn't those fancy words like schizophrenic or anything like that. It was just that I had... I had closed my mind so much that slowly it was opening up. So it was more therapeutic for me. I didn't do it for other people as much as I did it for myself. But it started helping other people. Nothing can save a sinking heart. Okay? Nothing can save a weak heart than the, we, than the heart that has weaned out the pain. And, and the best help that you can give your aching heart is to bend and to pick another up. So that's precisely what I did. I kept bending and picking other hearts up and I felt better after that. These all are the things that I used to do. Did you look at my polka dotted shirt? <laughs> okay, and that's my transgender friend. Okay, I'm gay. Okay, I'm not proud of it because you guys are not proud of being heterosexuals. So I don't see a reason, of, reason to be proud. <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, and, and I am a very nice guy. I am very tolerant of heterosexuals. <laughs> I'm very tolerant of transgenders, okay? Though there was, a, there was this thing, I had this, I had this fight within myself and I had to find out for myself what my sexuality was. I did go on a sex date with a girl because I didn't want, I, I had gone to a commercial sex worker in Singapore and I had sex with her. It was a one night stand and it just didn't stand. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I decided, then I decided that I'm not going to live a lie. I'm not going to get married to a woman just because, just because I need to have one plus one is equal to two. You know, one plus one is equal to three. Sex is good even if it's not for procreation. Sex is natural even if it's for recreation. So, so I feel that, so, so I realize that we don't have a culture of speaking about sex. And I also realize that people have to be slated into homosexual, bisexual, transgender, and all of that. Why can't we just live, have the culture of sex? How does me having sex with a boy matter to my, uh, uh, how does that, how is that related to my sex abuse? Do, do women who get raped by men think that probably, oh, I got raped by men, so I become heterosexual? They don't think so. So, my, gen, my sexuality, my sex abuse and my sexuality are two different things. And they need to be seen in two different ways. So, today here I am, a homosexual man standing in front of you. Okay? And I'm not going to presume that all of you all are heterosexuals. You know, dreams come true. And everything that I've dreamt of, I'm not a, I'm, I told you, mujhe, if I have to say something in Hindi, I would say, mujhe happy hona bahut pasand hai. That's something that my loved one tells me. And I'm a very happy person. Yes, a bad thing has happened with me, but no. And everything that I've dreamt of has come true. My biggest dream, uh, my support was Sri Devi. I used to watch, she's a Bollywood actress, and I used to watch her films all the time, because she used to win over the villain in the end. So... So I used to watch her films all the time and I always dreamt that one day I'll go and meet her. I'll just see her, you know, not even touch her. And that's exactly what I did. I just wanted to touch her and see her, whether she's really true. <laughs> okay, so uh, speaking about all of this, um, the first and foremost thing is, can we, have, can we start speaking about sex? Sex is not a bad word. Sex is not always science. Okay. Sex is something, the reason, if your parents didn't have sex, you wouldn't have been over here. That's the reason for your survival and my survival too. You know, my parents are not virgins. So, we need to understand one thing, that sex is the reason for our survival and we need to have a culture of speaking about sex. So, can we do a small exercise? Is everyone ready? Yeah? A small exercise. I'm going to say a few words and you're going to repeat that after me. Okay? We, we, 
do you know that we, that the main problem about sex abuse and uh, the, the problem is, uh, is very deep rooted we give nicknames to our body parts chuchu chuchi din din you know so if i were to tell if i were to tell my mother that i was being abused what do i tell her that he comes and touches my chuchi so it doesn't even sound serious so we are going to do this small exercise right now and we are going to i'm not going to give this give this huge talk and not get you guys to do something with me so i mean it in a good way <laughs> okay so i'm going to say something and you're going to you you're going to repeat that after me let's say penis, penis. let's say vagina. vagina let's say clitoris, clitoris. let's say anus. anus let's say breast, breast. let's say breast, breast. Well, i just know these many <laughs> thank you so much you've been a wonderful audience thank you very much <laughs>